Well, howdy y'all. So we're uh, finishing up the ceiling panels on this video. And here we're in the master bedroom in the back of the house here. And I don't know what I was thinking. I put that ladder up on top of my bed mattress and trying to hold that up there. And it was just so wobbly. But I was able to get it up there. And luckily it came out pretty level. And then on this one, I'm using my TV to hold up the back corner there and the TV survived and we got that up there too so hey improvise it's all good but see on this back one here at the back end of the bed or foot top end of the bed I guess it would be uh, I decided hey let's not get on the mattress again and we we pulled the the bed forward so we had room to put the ladders in there so we got that done and the room's a little wider than eight feet so we had to get some cut pieces in here and this one just went around the closet so I'm just doing slow motion so you can see my funny faces and then just that little L shape in there so I had to do some extra cutting on that one to get it to uh, fit properly at the four foot section and then we're cutting out I cut in four LED lights on this bedroom and then you'll see the little blue box there for a future ceiling fan light combination or at least a fan probably get one with a light in it but I have my eye on some and then coming out of the bedroom this is the laundry room hall section you know i got the washer and dryer there on the left and got the vapor barrier up in that section and here just slow mo again just so you can see all the complicated cuts i had to do on this piece to get it around the wall here because the door going into the bathroom is going to set in just a little bit from that uh, wall there from where the dryer is so just had to do some complicated cuts and see how fun it was to get that up there in real time and then have some overlapping vapor barrier there so just kind of tucking it in behind probably should use some tuck tape to keep that um, all sealed up but i'm not too concerned about it so good enough but anyway so we're just finished tacking this up put a light in there and we'll uh, move on out of this part of the house Alrighty, another day. We'll start working up here, going into the front bedroom. I kind of cleared it out here as much as I could. And there's still some, still some stuff in here, but we stuffed as much in the middle bedroom as we could, even though it was already full. So now it's barely enough room to get in there. But uh, yeah, we just want to make some room so I can start doing the wiring for the lighting in here. So I think we're going to do one, two, three, four lights in here. Kind of like I did in the master bedroom. This one's smaller, so it'll be brighter in here. Not going to put a ceiling fan in the middle of this one. But yeah, just going to do that. And then we'll put the vapor barrier up and then the paneling up there. I'll probably do the wiring, you know, finish the wiring here for the lighting in here as well. Put one puck light here and then one over the shower. And then someday when a vanity's here, we'll put a vanity light up. And... I will do. I have enough paneling, about nine sheets left, and then odds and ends to at least do this bedroom and that bedroom. Everything else is pretty much done. I did do this, finish this hallway up uh, off camera, and I think I'm going to do drywall in this bathroom and the master bathroom just to give it that sanitized white look in the bathrooms. We'll see though. Uh, I might I probably have enough paneling to do this bathroom if I wanted to do it in the ceiling paneling, but I don't have enough for the master bath, I'm pretty sure. Then again, I only have three more sheets of drywall, so I'm going to have to buy some drywall. Either way, but we'll just start working on this and make it so I can not have to use the string lights. We're getting close. It's just this room and the mini bedroom here with the string lights and... We'll get those done and relegate these to outdoor status at some point. All right, let's go. And we're off. So now we're just, uh, you know, bringing some wire in from the light switch and getting the boxes ready to put the Romex through them there with the little wire nuts so they don't fray the Romex coming through there. And so this is the second one, wiring it in, and I think we talk about doing four in this room. And so here's, I think I didn't show the third one, but here's the fourth one ending over by the bathroom door there. And look at that, getting rid of that string light in this room. So now it's time to put up some more vapor barrier. Again, just put, this is that six mil plastic I have. 
you know, like I said, it's a little bit much for putting on ceiling vapor barrier, but it's what I got. So it's what we'll use instead of buying a whole new roll. And then just have to do some funky cutting and tucking around the corner here. And so now it's time to put up some paneling. But first we got to measure the middle of the room with my little laser measuring device, which I just love. And here goes the first panel. And we'll talk about how dead on accurate that is. All right, the first ceiling panel for the front bedroom is in and we're spot on with the laser level here in the middle section of the room. You go up in there and see the pencil mark is right in the middle there. It's good. And then we'll go on the other side and you'll see the laser levels on the halfway mark on the wall. And then you can see it's right on the pencil mark on that as well. So that's really good. And it is cut. It is an eight foot section because the first roof truss over there is just a little bit farther off the wall than maybe two inches so it would have ended right about here for the eight foot section so we had to cut it down to the next roof truss which is like six ten and a half so we'll cut another one at six ten and a half for the second half four foot section will fit here we'll have to cut some angles off of that one to make it fit there around the bathroom wall and the closet and we'll cut some smaller pieces to the end here yeah going well and we'll probably get this room done today or at least roughed in all right now that the first one is you know dead on center it makes the other ones a little more square well somewhat i mean this house isn't fully square and we'll see that here in a second and when we go to this front one here you know i like that these little four foot panels or i think it's a little less than four foot panels i don't have to use the ladder but it didn't fit perfectly so we had to do a little manipulation there and then it was a little tied up in the front corner there because yes this isn't a square house so we had to do a little cutting and mallet manipulation but we got her in there and then the most complicated cut we had on all of these little ceiling panels where we go from the wall there into the angle for the bathroom door we had to go down Four, I think it was the fourth times was the, was the charm before we got that cut properly enough to get put up in there. And then here's the little closet section. There's a little gap there, like two or three inches you can see in that closet. And we'll just cut a little strip later on off camera for that one and get it filled in. And then we'll just do the four LED lights for this bedroom. Not symmetrical like the other rooms, but I think it'll be just fine. Be a little brighter in here like we talked, but we got dimmer switches, so it'll be A-OK. -okay. So anyway, so we showed you a lot of ceiling panels and LED light installs, and we got a little bit more, but now we'll switch it up to some something a little different. We'll finish up some electrical outlets for, I think we had about four in this bedroom that I had to do, and the supervisor came to town, so I had to make sure I was not slacking so she, she i think she approves my work but we'll get those done and talk about it right about now all right there we go and we just finished putting all the receptacle outlets in here we have one here behind this ladder which is going to be the showers back behind there so there's one outlet there one here by the closet and then coming over to this corner, we have three here, which is probably overkill. Probably could have just done with these two or maybe this one and that one. Is what it is. And then we have this for the in-wall heater, which I will be putting here, putting in next. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a, a look at the layout for the outlets in this room. And there is one behind this dresser that I did quite a while ago. So anyway, we'll get to work on the heater. All right, so what we're working with here on the in-wall heater is the Cadet in-wall 120 volt or 1,000 watts. So it's on the, I think they have one a little bit lower than 1,000 watts, but this is a pretty small room, so I think it'll be good. And again, these are just supplemental heaters, uh, you know, because I have the mini split. Uh, this one I got at the Habitat store for 100 bucks. They do have like uh, sales color-coded per tags. I don't remember if I got this 25% off or not. Probably not, because these sell pretty fast 100 bucks a little high um, but brand new which actually this has never been used so it technically is brand new 
but at the depot or something. I think they're up to like 140, 145 these days. So that's still a good deal, can't complain. And then did get a in-wall thermostat as well. This one was more uh, properly priced at the Habitat store for 10 bucks. I think these are about 25 brand new, which this is technically new too, because I don't think it'd been used, but we'll get to work on these. Okay, you gonna let me work? So yeah, so the uh, second shift supervisor came on and she's a little bit more micromanaging. Got to be up in my business making sure everything's good. But for here, we're just putting the Romex through the little wire clip here in the box. Comes to the top on mine since I have a thermostat coming in above it. And <laughs> this dog, I tell you. Anyway, so on the side here, since it's up against the 2x4 on the left, there's a couple holes on each side and we just put some... Uh, screws in there to hold that into place and there's a little green ground wire at the bottom there so we stripped that and crimped it or not crimped it but just twisted around because it's a braided wire and then we're using a wire nut to connect the grounds and then so you have the neutral and the hot since it's a 120 volt so you got two wires to hook up there one for the hot and one for the neutral and the bottom part has just two pegs so it just kind of sits in there and then there's two holes on the top part one for a little screw that holds the heater into place into the bracket and then you got two longer screws that hold the white frame on and it can kind of go through the drywall and if you have any two by fours there it'll hold on to that this one here has a little knob for its own thermostat so i technically wouldn't need to put a thermostat above here so i'll just keep that thermostat turned on super high on the bottom so that it will always come on no matter what this thermostat's set to. But this is the one that creates the, you know, temperature for the room. So that's how that works. And you can hear it clicking and clacking for the set temperature of the room, even when power's not on. So. Mom loves to be on camera, let me tell you, but she came to visit that day and now we're just kind of putting all my tools into that room so I can get to work in here. And this is the middle bedroom. And I had one wire out that wasn't too long for the electrical, for the for the lights, but I decided four lights in this room was overkill so we had to make a wire a little bit longer so that I could put the uh, just two LED lights and start in the middle of the room. So I had to take the drywall off there that you saw and make a longer wire come in there so I could do that and now we're setting up another circus tent here vapor barrier so that we can put the last of the ceiling panels in and this room since it's literally eight well actually it's just about a half inch shy of eight feet wide so I just was able to put one panel up against the back wall there or side wall whatever you want to call it and then cut a half inch off the next one so I'd you know, didn't have to use my little laser measuring device to see where the middle of the room is. And it's nice to have these things be flexible, unlike the drywall, because I had to cut the drywall panels and have to do this room because I couldn't get them around that corner. So it was nice to be able to get full sheets in there. So that was nice to do. And then so we got this one up there. I think in that back corner there, I had to do some more mallet manipulation. And then these two pieces is the front room. I had to cut, you know, a little section off of each one because of where the roof trusses were and they fit in there perfect. A little bit big gap, but, you know, we'll use the furring to cover that up and then we'll finish the lighting here. And my ceiling paneling is done. Yeah. All right. So you just saw me finished up on this middle bedroom here. So we got all the paneling in there. Got the lights running. So that's good. And then you saw me just before that finish the front bedroom up here earlier. Got all the paneling done in here with the asterisks of not doing the little bathroom in there because we'll do sheetrock at some point. But that's after we get the vent pipes through the ceiling. And then this was the first section that I did. The main room and the kitchen and the bump outs down there. I don't remember if I showed this, but I ended up you know putting this paneling in. Um, because we're not going to put the vent pipe through the ceiling. 
We're doing an air admittance valve, which I finally got the name of it, air admittance valve. So we're going to do an air admittance valve there. So we don't have to worry about the hole in the ceiling. And then here is the hallway with the laundry room going into the master bathroom and the master bedroom. Again, going to do drywall in there so it's not done. But we got the master bedroom all finished. Baby's ready for bed. And then here we just got the wall the wires coming out the ceiling there because we're going to have to enclose that in. You know, straighten all those wires up and then at some point we'll swap these out. I just haven't done it yet because this is a longer panel. So I have to do some cutting of the conduit here. Um, so we're going to wait till it's a warmer day and a lighter day so that I can have the electricity off for extended time and no heat. Not worry about it. So we'll get to that. Yeah, it's nice to have all this done. Well, done as in... You know, I still got to put the furring strips up there to tighten it all up and make it look really nice. But that'll be after I do all the drywall and stuff. So sometime down the road. But I kind of just gave you a walkthrough, but I didn't give you like a tour proper. And some people have wanted to see that. So what I will do, since I've kind of gotten it a little organized in here, is I'll do a video, probably do it next, um, where I like walk through the house and then show intersplicing f pictures of or video of the first day that I walked in here when I was a hoarded up rotten mess. So you can see where I'm at um, halfway through this build, or I guess I'm probably way more than halfway done, but just give it a little comparison from where we were. So yeah, so stay tuned for that and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And say goodnight, Callie. We'll see you on the next one. All right, take care, y'all.